So, uh, let us uh, get ahead with the study of statistical mechanics. Um, just wanted to make uh, two points clear. Uh, one is that when you study statistical mechanics from a book, uh, it is usually very verbose, which means that a uh, lot of reading needs to be done, a lot of description is given sometimes uh, through examples or through uh, you know words uh, and uh, uh, you do not feel it uh, so attractive to read through uh, all these verbose description. But you have to understand one thing that uh, the author is not uh, you know present in front of you. So, whatever his thoughts are. Uh, the way he wants to clear up the concepts and confusions, etcetera, that he has to do it by description and that is why often it gets uh, verbose and um, students find it that they are too much to read uh, and uh, feel a little disappointed about that. Uh, but that is a part and parcel and you should read books and there are uh, extremely good books on statistical mechanics. I will just uh, list a few of them. Uh, we have a very good book called Pathria. Uh, so, uh, Pathria then there are there is a good book by Huang. Uh, there is a very nice book by Jem Setna. Um, then there are uh, these uh, uh, Macquare. Uh, I guess this Q has to be capital. and so on um, and there are other books as well, but uh, these are uh, some of the books that are that are very good and they give you a lot of um, insights into the study of statistical physics. However, each uh, has a distinct way of presentation. So, uh, my suggestion would be to stick to uh, one book and learn the subject well and in fact, Pathria is a, a very good textbook which is uh, accepted all over. Uh, so, uh, you may want to have a copy of this and uh, study along with the lecture notes that you have from this course. Uh, the second thing is that uh, you would often find me uh, writing on the uh, on the board on this digital board and uh, this is to uh, make sure that you do these as I do it uh, in front of you. So, you do it uh, on your own and uh, the, a lot of uh, calculations will get uh, clear uh, when you uh, do these calculations by hand uh, without seeing either the lecture uh, videos or uh, some of the books try to do it themselves. And this is one of the reasons that I uh, some of the derivations where uh, I need to speak and give you the steps of derivation I do that instead of just showing you the slides which will uh, have uh, lesser effects than what is intended here. All right, so uh, we'll start with uh, ensemble theory um, and uh, the application of statistical mechanics uh, relies on the study of uh, ensemble of systems and not a single system. In fact, um, uh, it's often uh, difficult to uh, study the properties of a single system. Whereas, um, the properties of similarly prepared this word is important similarly prepared system is uh, possible and often easy to interpret. I will give you an example that uh, if you are an avid follower of cricket, uh, you would know that um, somebody talks about uh, either the strike rate or his average um, uh, scores in an innings uh, for a batter. Uh, and that is uh, often taken when he has at least uh, played 20 uh, matches or 50 matches and so on. Uh, anything lesser than that there is no point in talking about averages. Okay. So, a large number of uh, innings or large number of matches are uh, being considered when you talk about averages and so on. So, um, these are uh, in, in this technical jargon it is uh, they are called as uh, ensembles or uh, these will uh, know what ensembles are. Uh, but let me uh, first uh, take you to some of the prerequisites of ensemble theory. Uh, one of this is called as uh, a phase space and the other is called as a macro states, micro states and macro states. Okay. So, uh, we for that uh, let us uh, take this phase space. 
And uh, in classical mechanics, we are uh, quite familiar with uh, the configuration space and the momentum space. Uh, in fact, um, the configuration space that is uh, you know given by x, y, z or r theta phi and so on, uh, they can be solved by solving Newton's uh, law of motion uh, subjected when a particle is subjected to certain uh, force. And um, uh, this is widely uh, used in all branches of physics not only in classical mechanics. And momentum space description is often suited in various uh, fields of quantum mechanics or say for example solid state physics when a system has translational uh, periodicity or uh, translational invariance that is uh, the space is homogeneous then uh, k is a, a good quantum number or is a conserved quantity and that is why we uh, resort to the momentum space or k space. Here k means uh, uh, p equal to h cross k. Uh, okay. uh, so, this configuration space is as I said just uh, represented by x, y, z and um, uh, the volume of, uh, is, uh, of this space is given by uh, dx, dy, dz as you can see it here in this uh, diagram below. And uh, so, it is uh, a cube, it is a small cube and uh, uh, that uh, each of the uh, sides are dx, dy and dz and with respect to certain origin there is a point that is at the say the center of the cube which has a position which is x, y and z which is not shown here, but that is what it is. Uh, let me uh, try to show this uh, here. So, this point that you see here is x, y, z and so on with respect to certain origin. So, you have built up uh, a volume around it uh, and this volume has uh, uh, this uh, the volume is equal to the dx dy dz. Similarly, in the momentum space once again we have uh, uh, this momentum given as uh, say p x, uh, p y and p z to be the center of this uh, this cube is uh, has coordinates p x, p y, p z in this uh, a plane defined by p x, p y and p z and you have constructed a volume around it and uh, it is often written with a d tau uh, or we can also write it with d v which is equal to d p x, d p y and d p z. Now, what is phase space? So, phase space is a mathematical concept of constructing a six dimensional space which incorporate both the configuration and the momenta coordinates which means that for a single particle it will have uh, 6 coordinates um, uh, to go along with and these 6 coordinates are x, y, z and p, x, p, y, p, z and now the elementary volume is um, a 6 dimensional uh, quantity which is dx, dy, dz, dpx, dpy, dpz and so on. So, uh, this is a 6 dimensional uh, plane or space for one particle and since uh, we consider n particles and n to be of the order of Avogadro number 10 to the power 23 or 10 to the power 24, uh, the space is 6 n dimensional. So, even if it looks like that we have uh, artificially enhanced the dimensionality in which we are going to study, uh, but this makes a lot of things uh, quite simpler and which is what we are going to see. So, uh, in a general sense uh, instead of using x, y, z one uses uh, uh, q 1, q 2 uh, up to q uh, 3 n coordinates, uh, n stands for the number of particles as I said there will be p 1, p 2 and uh, p 3 n uh, where q's are called as the uh, configuration coordinates and uh, these are the momenta. And why do we shift from x, y, z to uh, uh, q 1, q 2? That is because these are called as the generalized coordinates and how generalized coordinates um, differ from ordinary um, Cartesian or ordinary uh, this uh, configuration coordinates because these take into account the, the constraints that the system uh, possesses. Okay. So, the system may possess certain constraint say uh, there is a, a you know a sort of uh, dumbbell uh, which is in space which means that uh, uh, there is a constraint that the uh, distance between these two weights uh, they always remain fixed uh, and uh, this may actually rotate 
um, or they may undergo translation, but with respect to one the coordinates of one um, of the masses let us call this as mass m1 and m2 uh, the distance is always uh, constant and this is a constraint of the problem. So, these ui's they take into account the constraints. All right. So, uh, the state of the particle this is very important the state of the particle is denoted by a point in the phase space. So, the state of the particle means uh, or the state of the system for example, uh, is a point in the phase space. So, 6 dimensional space or 6 n dimensional space if you uh, put a point there and that point is your system may be a classical ideal gas that is a, a sort of a representation of uh, your system in the phase space. And of course, as uh, you know that uh, time evolves and uh, the, the molecules of the gas would be moving around due to uh, the kinetic energy present in them, this uh, gas will execute a trajectory in the phase space. So, that could be uh, you know a line or that could be sort of a trajectory that we that we will see soon. Okay. Uh, though it is a, a purely classical concept because we are uh, talking about energy and momentum at the same footing and which is prohibited by quantum mechanics uh, owing to the uncertainty principle which says that if you really want to precisely determine uh, the position of a particle uh, then the momentum uncertainty that is a measurement of momentum yields a very huge uncertainty and this is called as the uncertainty principle and uh, delta x into delta p x uh, will be of the order of h cross which of course, so we can uh, neglect in classical mechanics, but h cross which is or h uh, say for example, h is uh, the Planck's constant it cannot be ignored in uh, quantum mechanics. However, Still, if you want to have an analogy and uh, want to sort of carry on some of the ideas of uh, classical mechanics to quantum mechanics, then uh, this point that we talk about in this uh, phase space uh, can be uh, represented by a small volume of the order of h cube uh, and uh, that would sort of uh, let you at least uh, establish a correspondence or an analogy. So, this uh, evolution of the particles trajectory uh, are given by these uh, equation of motion these are called as the Hamilton's equation of motion where uh, the time uh, evolution of the coordinates uh, which are called as a qi the generalized coordinates uh, and the generalized momenta here which are pi uh, are given by uh, del h del pi and minus del h del qi where h denotes the Hamiltonian of the system. All right. So, if you solve them uh, they uh, give you how q i and p i they evolve uh, in this uh, phase space. Okay. So, uh, a surface in the phase space is defined by the locus of all the uh, phase points that satisfy this relation that uh, uh, h of a q p which is the Hamiltonian which is a function of this generalized coordinate and the generalized momenta uh, that would give you the energy which is a constant. So, e is the energy of the system. So, that is the surface in a uh, phase space and uh, uh, it, this surface either can be a hyper uh, you know volume or it can be uh, uh, it is often called as a hyper cube or uh, hyper surface or hyper volume and so on. So, this is a generalization of, uh, of this volume uh, from say three dimension that we are aware of to larger much larger dimension. Okay. Often we find that it is uh, uh, much better not to fix a value of energy to be taking a single value that is you relax the condition that uh, uh, the energy is strictly a constant a value E, but you allow a small variation of uh, energy 
of the system and uh, so uh, say the system can have energy between some E minus delta to E plus delta where delta is a uh, has a dimension of energy and, and is a small quantity as uh, compared to E. Okay? Um, and so, the trajectory of the system will be uh, restricted in a hyperspace which is defined by these two limits. Okay. Let me um, now uh, sh sort of show you the phase space, uh, how does it look like for a uh, couple of simple examples. And uh, say the first example is uh, a mass m uh, is confined to move in one dimension okay so uh, and it's a free free mass or free particle okay so you can add this thing it's a or we'll just add it here uh, it's a free particle and the moment i see it's a free particle it means that the energy is given by e equal to p square over 2m because it's free the only energy that it has is a kinetic energy and p is a momentum and uh, m is a mass as it's been said okay so, uh, this tells you that uh, if you want to know the phase space of this uh, particle which is confined to move in 1D free particle. So, this P becomes equal to a plus minus root over of 2 M E and that gives you that uh, there are these two energy values. So, this is your uh, now we can call it X or Q whatever you want to call it. And so, this is a um, plus root over 2 m e and this is minus root over 2 m e and this is the p axis. So, it is a p q plane and we are just talking about one particle. So, this is the phase space uh, of this particle. So, they are restricted between two values uh, of p which are plus root over 2 m e and minus root over 2 m e. And um, just like as we have said, if you give a little bit of uh, energy uh, variation so that they are uh, really uh, allowed to be confined in this region and similarly in this region, then this is of course of the width. This is a delta p and this is delta p as well. And uh, so, the, uh, the, the total phase space is uh, for this particle, uh, there is just one particle as I said and, and that too in one dimension. So, things are extremely simple. So, total phase space available to the particle is equal to uh, 2 into delta p into root over 2 m e. And the 2 you understand because there are 2 of them uh, at plus uh, root over 2 m e and minus root over 2 m e and delta p is the width. So, that shaded area is the phase space that is available to the particle to move in. Okay. Second, uh, the more familiar example that uh, is there everywhere. So, for a 1 D harmonic oscillator. So, what I mean by 1D harmonic oscillator, it could be uh, a mass spring system say for example like this. So, there is a rigid wall which uh, has a spring attached to it and there is a mass that is uh, attached to it and this is uh, of spring constant k or it could be a pendulum say which is uh, uh, made to uh, you know uh, oscillate in this uh, vertical plane. Uh, so, the energy of that is uh, given by the p square over 2 m, uh, but now it is not only p square over 2 m, there is a half k x square energy which is associated with the spring. Let us just talk about the spring mass system, uh, this is equal to the total energy. Okay? So, if energy is uh, a constant, then of course, uh, you have uh, this uh, 
it varies with p and x as p square over 2 m plus half k x square. Now, what I do is that I will uh, do like this uh, root over 2 m e whole square plus uh, x square by uh, root over 2 e over k square that is equal to 1. I will write it in this particular fashion and this is nothing but uh, the equation of an ellipse uh, and uh, uh, this has in the p x plane. Uh, remember that we are writing it x uh, back to the uh, original uh, notation for the configuration coordinates. Uh, one could write it as q as well uh, just to uh, loosely writing it as half k x square. So, this is the p axis and this is the x axis or q axis it will be a ellipse uh, which has a semi major axis as uh, root over uh, 2 m e uh, square. So, this is like a p square by a square plus uh, x square by uh, b square this is equal to 1. So, you have a semi major axis and a semi minor axis there and again uh, if E is made to you know um, sort of uh, vary between uh, some E plus delta to E minus delta we can write it as. So, this is the available phase space for the particle. Okay, so, uh, this is uh, the phase space available is between these two ellipse which uh, this is E plus uh, delta E and say this is E minus delta E or just E that would be also be fine, okay. but we just write it in a symmetric fashion. So, it is between E plus delta E and E minus delta E. Okay. So, these are the concepts of phase space that you often get. Let us just look at the second thing that we have talked about that is uh, this micro states and macro states as you see at the bottom of this uh, slide and uh, let us try to explain what are these macro states and micro states. Okay. The state of a system is completely specified by the macro states. which means that uh, it could be uh, the pressure, volume and temperature of a system or the energy, volume and number of particles of the system and so on. So, they uh, sort of tell you that uh, this, this uh, gas has a classical ideal gas has a certain pressure, volume and temperature or certain um, energy uh, coming from the, uh, the momentum. Uh, so, uh, make sure that this capital P is used for uh, pressure uh, throughout our discussion and small p is momentum. So, please uh, make this distinctions uh, in your when you read it or when you work out things. And uh, now, um, uh, this uh, state of the system uh, described by this PVT or EVN. Uh, they say nothing uh, about the internal structure of the gas, it just tells you about the state of the gas. And if you sort of if I have to give some examples, so let us say that we have a P, V and T uh, and there is a, a certain point which corresponds to P0, V0 and T0 of a gas. Uh, now, these are the uh, macroscopic parameters that specify the state of the gas that you have made a measurement and you have got a value which is P0, V0 and T0. Okay. But uh, this particular macro state may correspond to very large number of micro states. That is, uh, suppose we have we talk about a gas like this, we will just draw a few boxes here and 
only look at uh, say for example, a few uh, particles uh, and this is one particle marked by red and there is uh, one particle marked by blue and there is say one particle marked by green. Okay. There are of course, Avogadro number of particles, we cannot draw all of them, but we just simply uh, draw 3 particles and in this diagram, schematic diagram that you see, it represents the same gas with P0, V0 and T0. But however, uh, these particles which we have uh, marked by red, uh, blue and green, uh, they occupy different uh, configurational position or you can say the position in the phase space. We are just showing it uh, inside a box. So, it might give you a feeling that we are only talking about the configuration space, but that may not be true. It is uh, we may be talking about the phase space. So, in the phase space, uh, these 3 descriptions of the gas are distinct. So, they correspond to different parts uh, or different points in the phase space. So, let me uh, draw that phase space as well and uh, so there is a p uh, and sorry this is momentum so we'll call it as a p and now we go back to our original generalized coordinates and so on so this may be the trajectory of the particle uh, and uh, this is your a let's call it as a and this is b and this is c so this could be b and this could be c Okay, so, A, B and C, this uh, correspond to different points in the phase space. So, uh, these are, uh, this is the same gas as uh, we have in uh, uh, A, B and C, but their uh, internal structures are different and these corresponds to different microstates. Okay. So, uh, and every point on the phase space trajectory will give you a, a different micro state. Okay. And uh, so, a macro state in general is uh, it comprises of very large number of uh, a macro state comprises of a very large number of micro states. Okay. Let me give you another um, example. So, uh, let us have uh, a spin configuration or simply you can talk about magnetic moment. Uh, let me just go back and um, just reflect one more time on this, uh, the same slide that we have been on. You uh, might wonder that uh, we have of course, um, colored the uh, some uh, molecules of the gas by uh, some red, blue and green. Uh, is it really possible? I mean, is it uh, sort of, uh, can we do that? Are we allowed to do that? And the answer is that uh, yes, in classical physics, all these particles are known to be distinguishable. Uh, we can label them uh, as per our wish, but however, as soon as you go to quantum mechanics or quantum physics, uh, the particles uh, become in indistinguishable and indistinguishable particles cannot be uh, simply, you know, uh, uh, marked them by red, blue and green, uh, we will have to uh, you know follow that procedure of indistinguishability and we will do that uh, when we come to quantum uh, statistical physics. Okay. Coming back to the second example that we say, let us talk about a, a magnet and there are a number of spins and let me uh, sort of uh, this is, uh, so there are 4 magnetic moments or spins. Uh, if you like, they are pointing up and 3 are pointing down. So, I can have this and uh, this is another configuration of the same thing and uh, this is another configuration of the uh, same thing. And there are many configurations that one can um, uh, find or one can uh, write down. So, the the same macro state with you know uh, the net magnetic moment to be say 1 unit because there are 4 up and uh, 3 down. So, there is uh, eventually 1 uh, magnetic moment upward 
or pointing upward and so they correspond to all of these configurations they correspond to the same macro state. But however, each one of them is a distinct micro state. So, this is one micro state number 1 and this is micro state number 2 and this is micro state number 3 and so on and we can put you know um, a, a large number of combinations with here and each will give rise to a distinct micro states where uh, the first spin to the you know the seventh spin are ordered either up or down to give you the same magnetic net magnetic moment which is uh, one unit pointing upward ok. So, uh, let me uh, give you another example uh, of uh, say uh, walking in a room. Imagine yourself that you are standing in the in a square room or rectangular room it does not matter and you are right here ok. And you are asked to go from a uh, point A uh, to a point B ok. And uh, you know the so the uh, macro state would correspond to these two uh, extreme positions that one has to go from A to B, but then you see that there are so many micro states present you can you can go from uh, this side to this and then this to this you can go like this, you can go like this, you can go like this and you can go like this and you can go like this and you can go like uh, a large number of ways. So, uh, the number of ways that you can uh, go uh, or rather walk in order to reach from the point A to point B, uh, they denote the microstates. So, these are the microstates of the system and the macrostates are A to B is a macrostate, ok. I think it is uh, by now clear that uh, these uh, each uh, macro state which is a uh, you know overall course description of the system that corresponds to a large number of micro states. And these uh, micro states are very important because uh, these micro states will eventually uh, be uh, related to the entropy uh, of the system as we will see. Um, you take the log of the number of micro states and multiply it by the Boltzmann constant. Uh, you uh, get entropy of the system. So, that tells you that um, a ferromagnet uh, which is uh, represented by uh, only one configuration where all, all the spins are pointing up. I mean what I mean by ferromagnet is that uh, all the uh, magnetic moments are pointing in the same direction. Uh, this has uh, this just a one way that it can be done. and and uh, uh, so this has a uh, number of uh, micro state is equal to 1 and uh, the number of micro states equal to 1 and when you take a log of 1 you get a 0. So, the entropy of the system is 0 and by now we know that uh, the entropy is related to uh, the disorder present in the system. So, this system is least disordered and we know that it is an ordered system, an ordered system completely ordered system is. Uh, not a disorder system and that is why the entropy is equal to 0 ok. So, just coming back to our description of uh, this, uh, this uh, in the uh, PQ space or in the phase space our gas executes many uh, points uh, and uh, this is the same gas which gives you the A is the same gas which gives a P0, V0 and T0. And same with gas uh, B, the configuration B and same with C and same with any point in the trajectory that you see here and uh, that is why we, uh, uh, it is the same gas, it is the same system, uh, but uh, they have different micro states present uh, depending on the, you know, the different positions of the particle that we have depicted here.
okay. All right. So, um, now uh, let us uh, you know talk about a quantity called as the uh, phase space density. So, we have talked about phase space. So, let us talk about density of particles in phase space which is called as a phase space density. Okay. So, uh, let us uh, define this phase space density by a quantity called as rho which is a function of the generalized coordinates and the generalized <coughs> momenta and um, in a way uh, I mean um, implicitly all these are functions of time and so it is also can be written as a function of time. But, uh, uh, the time could be you know implicit because uh, uh, q i and p i both depend on time and um, the evolution of q i and p, p i are governed by Hamilton's equation of motion which we have seen that. Now, for a closed system closed means we call it closed or we call it isolated system. rho is equal to constant. So, q i p i t is equal to constant. Okay. Uh, sometimes we can write uh, rho as q i p i for reasons that we have just told you that q i p i themselves are uh, functions of time and in fact, this will, will show this to be true that uh, d rho d t. So, rho is not an explicit function of time or this phase space density is not uh, explicit function of time. However, for open systems what we mean uh, by open system once again is that a system in uh, touch or in contact with a heat reservoir. So, that it could uh, either exchange energy or it could even exchange number of particles. So, uh, in such systems uh, I mean rho uh, may not be constant and uh, it could uh, you know uh, sort of uh, uh, we need this quantity uh, a certain quantity in order to find its average. So, what I mean is that uh, I mean rho uh, q i p i uh, and t uh, can have different weightage at different parts of the phase space or regions of the phase space. So, what I mean is that, uh, so this is the phase space, so P Q and uh, this closed system it says that uh, the system is uh, likely to be anywhere with equal probability in this phase space. But now when you have uh, allowed the system to exchange say energy uh, and number of particles uh, either of them or both uh, then there are certain regions of the phase space that could be more important because it has to give you an equilibrium pressure volume and temperature. So, uh, if the gas is equally likely to be uh, in the entire phase space that may not yield a certain thermodynamic quantity as per your measurement. So, it could be that uh, there are uh, regions of phase space which are more important uh, and that would be. So, uh, what I mean is that uh, let us say this, uh, this particular region of the phase space is more important or this region of the phase space is more important. And uh, what I mean by more important is that it has larger weight. Now, let me uh, tell you what I mean by weight. Uh, you all uh, do courses uh, various uh, you know uh, courses such as quantum physics, uh, statistical physics, classical mechanics, uh, mathematical physics each of them has a weightage which is equal to um, to certain weightage. So, uh, suppose your uh, it is a x 1 weightage for a course A 
and x2 weightage for a course B and x3 weightage for a course C. So, uh, when you particularly get a, a grade say for example, let us not use um, A, B, C because we will be using them as grades later. So, let us use it as P, Q, R. So, these are subjects, these are markers for the subject and these are for the weightage which means that you are doing a 2 credit course or a 4 credit course or a 6 credit course and so on and so forth. So, if it is that then uh, the your uh, CGPA or CPI or uh, whatever it is called the SPI the semester percentile uh, performance index or whatever it is called in your uh, parlance. This could be uh, suppose you get an A grade in uh, this for this particular subject and you get a, a B here and you again get an A here. So, your uh, weightage the total marks that you get is A into x 1 that is 10 into x 1 uh, because A grade is say 10, 10 into x 1 uh, and 8 into x 2 um, plus 10 into x 3 divided by uh, 10 plus 8 plus 10. I have uh, given this example earlier as well. So, this is your uh, semester performance index that uh, you have got so much of uh, uh, CPI or SPI for this semester. Now, this you understand that if x 3 is much larger say x 3 is 10 and x 1 is uh, say 2 and x 2 is 2 then it is much uh, you know much more beneficial for you to actually do very well in this uh, because this is much larger going to give you a much larger number as compared to the other two. So, in the similar spirit we may need to uh, sample uh, the phase space and assign uh, more weightage uh, in certain of certain region of the phase space uh, than others and this would give you the experimental quantities that you actually calculate. So, um, nevertheless I mean uh, these integrated because it is a, a density or it is a probability. So, it is a D 3 N Q and D 3 N P and rho of uh, say Q P we write the first uh, coordinate and uh, then the momentum and this is equal to 1 because uh, uh, you, you need to have this as a normalized uh, probability or normalized density and similarly uh, for calculating an average. So, average of any physical observable uh, so that is f uh, average will use both kind of uh, you know notations and maybe sometimes interchangeably, but they mean the same thing and this is equal to a D 3 N Q D 3 N P and a rho of uh, uh, Q P and uh, F of uh, Q P and so on. Okay. Um, if you write it in terms of uh, uh, these are uh, as basically this is a 6 n dimensional integral. three n for the q coordinates and three um, n for the p coordinates okay. So uh, now this is called as an ensemble average. Okay. So, uh, you are taking an average of a certain physical observable over uh, several copies of the system which visit different parts of the phase space and with certain probability or with certain phase space density. So, you have uh, created all those ensembles or these microstates. So, uh, these going back to our earlier diagram. So, each one a is a microstate, B is a different microstate and C is a different microstates and all are members of the ensemble.
So, now you see that your microstates and particular family member of the ensemble they denote the same thing and when you do uh, an averaging over, um, over all these points or all these uh, face points, uh, you uh, actually uh, average over the ensembles and that makes study of statistical mechanics so accurate in knowing the, uh, the properties or the, or the internal structure of the system. Okay, because uh, you are taking uh, average over very large number of uh, copies of the same system which represent uh, uh, different microstates of the system. Okay, so, this is called as the ensemble average and uh, we will use ensemble average uh, throughout our uh, study of statistical mechanics. Okay. Now, uh, I will uh, come back to this later what is called as the ergodic hypothesis. Just want to make a mention of that here just the statement and we will uh, have a more elaborate discussion which is uh, a very important step in statistical physics. You know all these the gas molecules are randomly in motion. When they are randomly in motion they are evolving. When they are evolving how can you calculate the this equilibrium quantities or quantities such as pressure, volume and temperature and claim them that they are the equilibrium uh, pressure, equilibrium volume and equilibrium temperature that you have recorded, but the molecules are moving. So, uh, the idea is that that each of those ensembles that is the ones that we have shown here, each of those systems which are evolving as the time progresses. Uh, say from T1 to T2 to T3 as you go from A to B to C, uh, they can be uh, averaged and you can actually replace the time average by the ensemble average and this is called as the ergodic hypothesis and forms the you know the backbone of the study of uh, statistical mechanics. It is very important uh, for us and we will uh, come back to it you know in some time. Okay. Um, it is also very important to know that uh, uh, we always get ergodicity to be uh, obeyed. Uh, there are systems which are uh, non-ergodic and which is uh, currently a subject of research and uh, where the system is found to spend uh, more time uh, in certain region of the phase space. Uh, so, uh, during the course of its trajectory it uh, visits uh, significantly larger time in uh, or uh, uh, visits uh, a certain region of the phase space much more than it does uh, in some others. Okay. Let us uh, look at some property of this, uh, this phase space density and uh, let me, uh, so we are going to talk about Liouville's theorem. Uh, while we are at the discussion of uh, the uh, this phase space density and so on. Okay. So, uh, what uh, does it say? So, Liouville's theorem states that uh, the phase space density rho rho which is a function of q i, p i and t remains constant uh, in the neighborhood of a phase point of any phase point rather. It is again as I said verbose, but it is important to know that. Uh, so, it is uh, in, in the neighborhood of, a, of any point and along the trajectory. So, which means that it uh, remains constant, this rho remains constant um, with respect to time and we will show that d rho dt equal to 0. Okay. And uh, it is only a few steps um, and um, so, we write down a del rho del t will uh, prove this rather Liouville's theorem. 
and uh, the way we do it is the following that uh, the flow of particles. So, we will calculate this del rho del t uh, for uh, uh, flow of particles through a certain phase, certain phase of a cube. Uh, which is uh, perpendicular to uh, some q i um, and uh, then uh, you sort of uh, integrate over all the uh, other dimensions. Okay. So, uh, when we do that, so this will be uh, del rho del t or the change in the explicit uh, change in this. Uh, phase space density with respect to time. For that we calculate the flow of particles through a certain phase of a cube which is perpendicular to some coordinate q i. Uh, so, perpendicular to that. So, uh, there is a coordinate q i. So, you construct a volume or a, a sort of a, a cube around that and uh, that certain uh, phase which is perpendicular to that you calculate this. And so, what you do is that you uh, multiply it by, uh, so this will require you to multiply um, with uh, the dimensions of all faces. Okay. Um, so, uh, which means that dimensions of all uh, faces is d q j d p j where j is not equal to i. Okay. So, that tells you that what we are trying to calculate is this uh, flow of the particles which uh, is nothing but this del del q i uh, rho q i dot uh, and then you uh, product over all the j uh, d uh, q j d p j and um, uh, where of course, i and j they run over uh, uh, 3 n coordinates. Uh, del n del t is basically the flow of particles and uh, if you are familiar with uh, uh, divergence or uh, you know the vector calculus, this is how we do it that. Uh, uh, so, how do you find the divergence of a vector is that you consider a cube and uh, something that uh, enters through the left face and goes out to the right phase that uh, uh, the difference between that uh, denotes the divergence and this comes out as uh, what you see here and so on. So, uh, if you generalize it to all the uh, phases of the cube, uh, then your total del n del t. So, uh, generalizing it to to all phases. Uh, this is equal to minus of sum over i del del q i uh, rho q i dot uh, plus uh, del del uh, p i. So, uh, over this uh, momenta coordinate as well uh, rho p i uh, dot this multiplied by uh, d product over j d p j or let us just write the d q j first d q j and d p j. All right. So, um, uh, having done that, uh, so the change in density, change in density, uh, phase space density that is is a uh, del rho del t uh, equal to minus i. So, a uh, del del q i rho q i dot plus a uh, del del p i. Uh, what is meant by density is that we uh, divided by the volume of all other coordinates uh, this del n del t. So, in this expression we uh, simply divide by this volume and that is how we get the density. Um, so, this is equal to uh, p uh, sorry rho uh, p i uh, dot and 
Now, in order to uh, convert uh, or rather take this explicit uh, derivative with respect to um, uh, of this quantity rho with respect to time, we write a d rho dt which is nothing but a del rho del t del rho del t plus a summation over i and a del rho del q i q i dot this just uh, generally uh, writing uh, the way you take total derivative with respect to the partial derivatives del del p i and uh, p i dot and uh, now you replace call it at 1 and 2. I will just skip one step uh, here you put from 1 uh, from equation 1 and um, uh, what you get is uh, that. So, you put this entire equation 1 there and uh, you see that there are a lot of cancellation that occurs and d rho dt indeed becomes equal to sum over some uh, i and a minus rho and a del del q i dot divided by del del q i plus a del del p i dot del del p i and so on. So, this is a rho of course, we are uh, we, it is a function of q i p i and t which we are not writing it and q i and q i dot both are uh, functions uh, I mean the, the both are functions of t similarly for p i and p i dot. Now, uh, this is uh, an equation which is uh, which we arrive at, uh, but however, this can be further you know simplified by so use uh, these uh, q i dot equal to del h del p i uh, and uh, p i dot is equal to uh, minus del h del q i and if I do that here uh, sum over i and a minus rho and we have a minus del 2 h uh, del q i del p i uh, and uh, uh, this there is no uh, minus sign and there is a minus sign here. So, del 2 h for the next one. Uh, that is the second term inside the square bracket. So, uh, del uh, p i and del q i and uh, this is uh, equal to 0 because uh, uh, the, the way the order in which you take the derivatives should not matter because these are orthogonal coordinates. So, uh, which means that uh, we get uh, d rho d t equal to 0. which means uh, rho does not depend explicitly on time. Okay. Uh, so, which means that uh, one cannot change the density uh, of particles in the in the phase space. This is the important statement that we get. So, your del d rho d t is always equal to 0. So, uh, the time dependence in rho uh, that uh, solely enters from uh, the time uh, I mean the q's and p's they become time dependent. So, there is no explicit dependent on time for this row and uh, wherever you take this density of particles they would be uh, d rho dt will be 0. We we'll stop here and we will continue uh, from next uh, time onwards. Mm -hmm.